Well, hello friends and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today we have the rare opportunity to take a look at the guitars that started it all as far as the super tellies, the uh, Nashville tellies. It all begins right here. This is a Glazer Bender guitar. And there are so many like groundbreaking things about, about these guitars and the way they were made and how they influenced what was being made you know by by bigger manufacturers uh pickup winders all sorts of things so uh yeah that's going to be our topic today glazer bender telecaster guitars all right so if you've been enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed yet well please go down in the corner if you've already subscribed then i appreciate you supporting the show because that's what keeps it going that's what keeps us talking about crazy things like glazer tellies uh, there's multiple ways. You can go down in the description and there's tip jar information. Then you can go to Ask Zach. You can pick up a t-shirt like this, you know, Fender uh, amp circuit. Uh, you can uh, you can also become a friend of Ask Zach and you can support me uh, on a monthly basis. And I really, really appreciate the guys that have done that. So thank you. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk Glazer Tellies. So in the... In the early 80s, when, uh, when Joe Glazer started making these guitars, you have to realize what was going on in Nashville at that time. So pretty much, it was the urban cowboy period, and there was a lot of either clean strat with chorus, sometimes direct, or there was less Paul, per perhaps with you know e even some, some fuzz on it or something like that. And that was kind of the sounds that you heard. The, uh, the Telecaster was really kind of dormant during that period of time. And Joe Glazer was a pedal steel player that had moved to Nashville from the uh, California, the Bay Area, and had kind of dabbled some with building guitars and also with designing a string bender, a B, B bender that he designed without ha ever having seen uh, a Parsons White or a Evans or any other kind. He and that's why it's so very different from the others, and and I think it's cool. It's so much less invasive. So he he moved it. So Joe moved to town, and he decided he wanted to to build, and he uh, he kind of learned some things from Danny Farrington about kind of going to sound check and. Uh, you know, when an artist has more free time and, uh, you know, not, not going to a concert and trying to expect to put something in someone's hands after a show or right before a show. And he started building relationships with all these players in town. And he really wanted to build Telecasters because he loved, you know, kind of Bakersfield, Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, etc. music. And he liked Telecasters in general and Western Swing. So he wanted to build tellies, and he thought that Ricky Skaggs would be a good, uh, a good match. You know, and uh, so he built him a guitar while Ray Flack was still in the band, but then he built him a purple Telecaster style guitar. You know, when when he you know started being his own lead player uh, after Ray Flack left the group. So here's what's so unique about these guitars. Uh, you know, one, you have, you know, the visual aspect. Uh, most of them have a very flamey neck. And, you know, Joe, you know, Joe got his source from, well, he got the name of the source from, from Paul Reed Smith. And so he was getting flame maple from a guy. Uh, then, you know, guitars at this point would mainly have, you know, Shaler or, you know, Grovers on them. No one was using, you know, Cluson style, you know, tuning machines, except for maybe the reissues. And of course the old guitars had them. So because of the influence of Bill Hullett, who's a great telly player here in town and, and really pushed 
vintage Telecasters and the knowledge of them to players here in town and, and it really kind of, uh, you know, should be, you know, given credit. So thank you, Bill Hullett, uh, you know, for kind of pushing that. And so that's why these guitars have Cluse and Machine Heads because Joe was aware of how hardware affects tone and how, you know, the mass of the headstock changes the sound. So this has these Cluse and Machine Heads. Uh, the next thing was, you know, of course he used this, you know, graphite, uh, you know, nut, and that was, and that was due to the string bender. Then you have the other visual aspect, which is it's single bound, which, uh, I think Phil Kabicki had done some stuff, but it was all around the same time. So, so this was very unique, uh, eye catching colors. And he was using original lacquer Duco paint. So he found out through trial and error that thick finishes killed the sound of a guitar. And so again, this is pre-internet, pre-everything else. He's using thin, hard finishes and using Duco colors because there was a hardware shop here in Franklin, Tennessee, which is just outside of Nashville, that still had all the Duco stuff and the book on how to mix paints. And he would mix up his own paints. And of course, the names were still the same from, you know, from when Fender did it. And so... So this is kind of your, you know, Fiesta Red that he uh, that he mixed up, and uh, yeah, and it and it is a, a thin, very thin finish, thin finish on the neck, thin finish on the body. You know, Fender wasn't doing this. Even on their reissues, they have a poly undercoat and then they have lacquer over top. This is a hundred percent nitro. Uh, you know, of course, the third pickup. No one was doing that. There have been a few artists that had you know, added that to a guitar, but this was a guitar that was made with a third pickup. And to figure out where to put it, Joe made a guitar that had, that had it where the middle pickup would slide around. And he figured out that to really get that strat out of phase sound when you have like the front two pickups or the, or the back two pickups, the position was extremely important. And so by having this sliding, you know, pickup that was in one of the guitars that he built, he was able to figure out the optimal position to really get the Strat sound. Then you have his string bender, which, I mean, it, it's amazing. I mean, it, you know, the Parsons White was so much harder to install, which I, <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting the, this off. But yeah, instead of routing out a bunch of wood, you had this arm coming out of the neck plate. And then you had this, you know, modified saddle that has a, basically a steel guitar finger that moves. And so you had a string bender that didn't, you know, <laughs> didn't route out, you know, a, a fourth of the guitar. So this is, you know, extremely, uh, you know, innovative instrument. And no one was building anything like this. No one was, was building stuff that was, you know, kind of hot rotted vintage style. No one was spraying finishes like this. No one was using wood like this on a neck. I mean... <sighs> Really groundbreaking instrument. And then it kind of set the pattern because people saw these and then everyone kind of started copying them. And in fact, Joe ended up where he had made these original instruments for Steve Warner and Ricky Skaggs. You know, those are kind of the most famous, you know, players of these three pickup tellies, which of course, Ricky's was purple and uh, Steve Warner's was a darker red than this, more of a kind of a dark Dakota red kind of thing. Well, what he found was all of a sudden he was a victim of his own success in that now instead of making all these individual instruments, all of a sudden he was having to make, well, he was being asked to make copies of, of these guitars. So instead of some guy saying, you know, I want a, a telly with, you know, some different setup, all of a sudden everyone was wanting a purple telly like Ricky's or a red one like Steve Warner's. And that kind of took the fun out of it because it takes kind of the creativity because he had made those guitars for those artists. And then other people were just wanting, because of hero worship, which we're all guilty of, but so many people wanted a, uh, a copy. And he got tired of making copies. So eventually he, uh, he stopped building by the early 90s. But uh, these guitars are, again, super, super rare. Um, you know, besides Ricky and Steve Warner, you had, uh, you know, you had Jeff King, who he has a, a Lake Placid Blue 
telly that has no pit guard on it and it has a rosewood fretboard it has black hardware and he played that guitar with uh, patty loveless in the 80s and he you know he's done tons of session work and he still plays guitar to this day in fact it's missing a bunch of finish right here it's down to the raw wood jimmy olander very famous for playing glazer tellies and he, you know, of course, his, his have two benders on them. So he has a, a G bender and a B bender. And, uh, you know, and he's, you know, very much popularized. He has two of them that he plays quite a bit. One is the Taxicaster, which is yellow, and it has kind of a checkerboard pick guard. And it has a three pickup setup. And then he has the one that he plays the most, which is a pine body, maple neck, and it's an Esquire. And the pick guard has Mother Maybell, you know, Carter on it so yeah some other you know kind of cool instruments he made were he made electric mandolins with string benders on them that ricky skaggs made popular and some of those were semi-hollow uh then you have the lap steel that he made for jerry douglas which was uh, basically a, a lap steel strat you know that was you know uh, apparently uh jerry douglas was on a session and he used danny flower's strat and laid it on his lap and did some you know slide work on it and really liked the sound and so joe made him a lap steel strat uh bela fleck has a uh you know, electric mandolin i mean electric banjo that uh you know that, that joe made so joe was making all these you know cool guitars and instruments for people but then then people were just wanting copies of those guitars that he made for other people and so he eventually stopped building and he fully focused on uh, doing repair work. And the reason he enjoyed the repair work because it was always a different challenge. It was always a new problem to deal with and he wasn't making a, you know, wasn't doing something over and over again. And in fact, he still had to do things over and over again because people wanted his string benders. So he ended up hiring another person to do uh, the B bender installs so that he didn't have to do it. And then also the third pickup thing, because the third pickup thing became huge. And of course, just to back up a little bit, the third pickup thing, you know, Joe was sliding the pickup around, but also he was working with Brent Mason. So of course, I think you're probably aware that Glazer is the one that put the third pickup in, you know, in Brent's guitar and put the hum mini humbucker in the neck and did all that. So that was the other thing that, that Joe ended up, you know, doing a lot of is, is installing third pickups on tellies. But yeah, this was the first, you know, custom built, you know, three pickup, you know, Tele style guitar. And uh, yeah, they're just really, really cool. Really, really neat. Uh, thin, thin finish. They feel, they feel like, you know, they feel kind of like a hot rodded vintage guitar. And uh, this one has a V neck on it, kind of like my 57 Esquire. And then that's because th this guitar is owned by John Thompson. And, and thank you, John, for letting me you know, use your guitar. Thank you for shipping it to me so I could do this video. That was super kind. He wanted his neck to, uh, to be like a 57 Strat. And so that's what, uh, what Joe did. And so it has a really nice V neck on it. And it has this really cool Fiesta red color. So let's, let's hear a little bit of it. So I kind of you know, played a little bit of the string bender on the, in the back you know, pickup you know, in the beginning. that cool thing then you have uh, oh this mini switch uh, activates the neck pickup so that you can get both the front and back pickup together because you wouldn't normally get that with a five-way so then you have you know this Can, uh, you can have all three pickups. So let's turn the neck pickup off so you can hear the, the, the stratty tone. Or, you know, 
probably more 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 famous with one of these guitars in. Steve Warner, a little Linda. So he actually played a 59 Strat, you know, on that, uh, on the recording, but then of course he used, you know, his, his guitar almost identical to this, except a, a darker red on, uh, on that. So that's the, uh, that's the, 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 uh, the back two pickups. This is the middle one by itself. <laughs> Then the front two pickups. And then of course the neck. sounds uh in these guitars and uh yeah these were the first you know like super tellies they had uh, you know all sorts of sound in them sounds in them and all of a sudden a guy could just have one guitar had a string bender had a middle pickup to cover strat tones that you could still get telecaster sounds out of it and just uh you know all all around great so one glazer telly deserves another so yes I don't just have one of these. I've got two of these on loan to me. So I'm <laughs> very honored that they would, uh, you know, let me borrow their super rare custom guitars. So of course this one was owned by John Thompson. This one's owned by John Stokes. And you, as you can tell, this is a copy well, you know, of course, made by Glazer, but it's a, a copy of Ricky Skaggs' purple guitar. So, uh, down to the point that Joe had Ricky Skaggs sign the headstock, and it says, instead of Glazer Bender, it says Glazer Ricky Skaggs model. Uh, this also has some other signature on it. It's got Jimmy Olander's signature here. And then on the back of the headstock, I know this is upside down, but it's got, this is Marty Stewart's. And then it's got a hip shot detuner. Of course, it's got the bender. Uh, here you've got some missing finish, so you can see that this is swamp ash. Some of the other guitars, John uh, Thompson thinks that his is alder body. So, and then uh, Steve Warner's guitar is basswood, as far as the body is concerned. So, yeah, this is really cool because this is the guitar that I wanted as a kid. I fell in love with Ricky Skaggs' music and I had his Live in London album and he was holding a guitar identical to this. And uh, I just went crazy and I wanted one of these so bad. And finally, when I had enough money, I called Joe Glazer and uh, by that time he was not building anymore. So, and these guitars never come up for sale. Never. I've, you know, even Ryan Warner, who is Steve Warner's son, he said that he was, you know, just trying to insure his dad's guitars for the right amount of money. And he was talking to George Groon and others. And no one had any idea what to insure a Glazer guitar for because they never come up for sale. So, I mean, he, he knows what he paid for the guitar back in the 80s. But, uh, yeah, no, no idea. Because they, the guys that own them don't sell them. So, just on a, on a, a little bit of a tail note, you know, toward the end. Now, all these guitars, Joe made the necks. In fact, he said that he chopped up a, a Fender neck just so he could figure out how to do a truss rod install and everything. So these, these necks, he completely handmade, put the truss rod in. There was no one supplying parts. You know, the bodies, he shaped himself. You know, he made a template from a Telecaster body, and then, you know, he cut these out himself. Uh, yeah. He figured out how to do all, all this stuff on his own because there was no internet and he had to learn how to do all these things on his own. So, really, really 
stinking cool guitars. And I'm, I'm going to play this one for a little bit. This one is, is higher output uh, because the, the pickups are set up higher. And I don't want to mess with, uh, you know, people's setup. But here, we'll put this on the neck pickup and get one of my one of my favorite. Oh, you know what? I actually have to plug the thing in or it won't, wouldn't work. What's up with that? All right. that sound it has that you know the uh, walking in Jerusalem you know tone and that's the just the the neck pickup uh, yeah <laughs> Really cool. Makes me uh, embrace my inner child. Cause yeah, th this is, as a kid, you know, this this is what I wanted. I wanted a, a purple Glazer Telly or a red one. I'd take any, any color I could have gotten, but uh, yeah. All right. So uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed today's episode and today's look at, uh, at Joe Glazer. And again, I hope you understand how important these guitars were in influencing other builders and and how, you know, him getting in these in the hands of like Ricky Skeggs and Steve Warner, you know, was like the best form of advertising he could ever do. And really, you know, that's how these guitars, you know, got famous and known. And, and that's how they in, in turn influenced players and influenced demand. And that's how we ended up with, you know, three pickup tellies and, you know, and, and, and this kind of, you know, the kind of more you know, showy look, you know, where you had this kind of bright, solid color and the, and the binding and the flame necks and stuff like that, that kind of became, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, country, country, uh, hot rod guitar. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for all the ways you support me. I really appreciate it. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.